Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. I'm Mr. Magazine. I'm going to make a statement, Mr. Magazine. When, when you're, oh, you're working out here in the uh, weight yes, room, I yes. see. I'm going to make a statement, mm -hmm. see if you agree with me or not, and then let's talk about it. All right. We all start off selling common items. I would believe that. I would agree with that. All right. Hit the like. Subscribe. We'll see you next video. Easy. That was a quick, quick <laughs> Why? Well, you, you you probably don't know any better. You have no knowledge or experience, and you're probably scared to take risks at that point. So, you mean, you know, we started out at the, the sales, the, you know, state sales and auctions and all that. But there was a lot of people there that have been veterans, like mm -hmm. we are now. So, they had an edge on us, knowledge, knowing what was good. And they would bid things up, and we would probably be too scared, like, geez, is it really worth that much? I don't want to pay 20 bucks and it's only worth 10 or even 20 I'm losing out. So, you know, you have to kind of bide your time little by little and get some experience and then start hanging with the big boys. Yeah, you get into, uh, unless you get super lucky, but leaving out getting super lucky, you go to a, you go to an auction with magazines at it and they've got 1930s Vogues. Yeah. The veterans are bidding 30, 40, 50 bucks a piece on yeah. them. They have a box in the corner of American Riflemen from the 1970s. <laughs> I know where this is going. Guess what? You're carrying back to your car. Yeah. Uh, because you don't know any better. And you're like, wow, I got an entire box for $3. And you'll make money. How about all the end of rows we used to buy? Yeah, Just exactly. It was, it was whatever no one else wanted through the whole sale. And then we got them for pennies. But then... There's something good in there, right. always. Yeah, but you just have a lot of stuff built up that you know isn't good, and you're not going to waste your time listing it. Well, you, but back then, story. back then you did waste right. your time listing sure. it because you right. didn't know any better. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Same thing with comic books. You know, you go there. Obviously, again, unless you get lucky, and, and that does happen from time to time. You go mm -hmm. to some dealer, and he's got one old comic book hidden in a whole bunch of other stuff. It, it, for whatever reason, it's there. Right, yeah. He cleaned a house out, and there was one comic book. Yeah. You know, it could be a really good comic book. Who knows? Yeah. But if you go somewhere where there's tons of comic books, well, all the dealers have taken all the good stuff, and generally right. speaking, now they're they're going to miss certain things, obviously. Sure. But, hey, I just bought five, five long boxes of comics for 40 bucks. You probably didn't get anything good in there if you bought them off, you know, pick yeah. through comic books. Doesn't mean you can't make money. Right. Um but that's a great way to learn. And I kind of wanted to bring that up because uh, I was reflecting on that, just how my sales have changed throughout the years. And, you know, believe it or not, and, and I know your numbers dwarf mine, uh, but I've sold over 100,000 items on eBay at this point. Wow. I think I've sold something like just over 110,000 items. Um, that's a lot of product that, that I've moved. It is a lot. And as and a one-man band. On a regular basis, too. Like, that's the key. Like, that's the hard part. Like, being that successful, selling so many items every day, every day for, you know, 20, 30 years. It's not easy. No. No, it's not. But I'm certain that if I sat there and if I were able to do a run of all of the items that I sold and the prices I got out of them, I'd be saying, why did I sell that? Why did I sell that? Why did I sell that for $4? What was I thinking? Yeah. Well, it's when you start off, you don't know any better. And, you know, when you're thinking I bought, you know, let's just say that I did buy that box of mm -hmm. 75 American Rifleman magazines for $3. I paid yeah. four cents a piece. Yeah. You're going to make money. Sure. Um, and I'm sure that I did. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I got, you know, oh, I got $4. Somebody just bought three of them for 10 bucks, and I paid $4 for the box with, or $3.30 for the box with buyer's premium. Crazy. I did good. Yeah. Well, yeah, you did. <laughs> but as time moves on, you move away from that kind of stuff. Um, and we kind of wanted to bring that to you guys today. Just kind of, if you're newer and you're having trouble finding the good stuff, what would your suggestion be to people? Well, if you're looking for good stuff, I mean, you're brand, you're, <laughs> you're 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 new. You've been selling for, you're just starting out through like year two of selling. Yeah, I wouldn't be anxious and just buy anything. So if you go to you know, don't get down if you're going to an auction or estate sale. You're not spending any money. Don't force yourself to spend money and get in a whole buying things you don't need to buy. You know, if you're looking for that score and it's not there, just be patient and you know you, you'll it'll come to you. You know, just. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Magazine's given the exact opposite uh, opinion of what I'm giving you. My opinion is if the price is absolutely right and you have the ability to list stuff, 
Now, if I've sold 110,000 items on eBay and I have 22,000 items listed, that means I've sold or I've listed 132,000 items. I'm willing to list items every single day. If you are in that boat and you are willing to list items every single day, my advice would be, even if the stuff doesn't look very good, if you can get it for pennies on the dollar or free, take it and list it because that's how you learn. Because anything whatsoever, um, even things like National Geographic, you know, there's the 1969 issue with the uh, uh, moon landing. Mm. You've got the 1985 issue with the Afghan girl. Well, you might not know that. And so somebody's got those and they go, you want those? Just take them. Take them, bring them home. You do research on them. If, you're, if you've got nothing else to list, you list them all. And then you say, hey, wow, I, I didn't know this, but this other issue here sells yeah. all the time. Or a lot of people are asking me about the maps. Maybe I can just pull the maps out and throw the issues away. Or maybe I can cut the Coke ads off the back cover and sell those or whatever. But you're not necessarily going to know that unless you, you experiment on it yourself. And and we can tell you something or you can watch the auction professor's video on what sells or you can sit there and, and read posts from other people uh, on Facebook or whatever. Nothing. You're not going to remember any of that as well as you remember it if you've had the item yourself. True. Very true. And that's whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, if you sit there and you buy some item and you, 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 you do step up to the plate and you pay $40 for it and then suddenly you find out, oh, this is missing this and these magazines are often missing this, and you end up selling it for 20 bucks, you'll remember that the rest of your life. Yeah. Every single time those magazines come forward, you'll be like, I have to check to make sure that that is in there, yeah. because otherwise it's a sucker buy. Um, so Mr. Magazine and I have a little different opinion on that. Um, I guess it also depends upon how much inventory you oh, have. Yeah, how much money you have in your pocket, how much room you have to store it, how much time you have to list it. And how much inventory you currently have. Right. Now, obviously, if you want to be a, a reseller and your death pile <clears throat> is about a quarter of an inch high, eh, you probably want to buy stuff that day, no matter what it is, as long as the price is absolutely right. Sure. Now, let's say you happen to have a garage, basement, and living room, and sunroom full of stuff. I, I've heard people have that, believe it yeah, or not. Yeah. Um, you might not want to necessarily buy stuff. The only problem then is when some somebody takes you for a sucker and starts bringing you stuff over and leaving it all in your living room and saying, well, "Here, it's yours." Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I need the room. You have the room. Oh yes, I do. But no doubt at all about it. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. But but again, um, don't get down on yourself if if you aren't finding the good stuff. Uh, it's it happens to everybody when they start out. And I think one of the biggest reasons why it happens is. Let me ask you this, Mr. Magazine. Sure. I remember still all the way back when when you bought, it was a Bible. Okay. And it was a Tarzan book. And I don't know if you remember this or not. No, thanks. We're so. going back to like 1999. Whoa. Uh, oh, and you bought Lois Lenski books. Okay, that sounds familiar. So Mr. Magazine bought all three of those, and we knew nothing whatsoever about books. Mm -hmm. And you ended up getting yelled at by buyers because you were listing the Lois Lenski books and you weren't noting in there the printings because we didn't okay. know that you had to do that. Okay. And you looked it up and like, wow, Lois Lenski books go well. Well, yeah, they do first prints do. Yeah. But you might have had prints from the 1960s when they first came out in the 40s, let's say. Gotcha. Um, and then the Tarzan, you listed it and it didn't go for anything near what we thought it would. And it turns out because it was a Grass and Dunlap reprint, versus the original. Well, we didn't know any of that right, stuff. Sure. Um, and so you're brand new to reselling. Yeah, you're going to have trouble finding the good stuff because you could be staring at it a lot of times and not know that it's good stuff. And that's right. another thing, too. Think of Just think back to the number of things that you've sold this last week. I took a lot of chances when I was younger, too. <laughs> you know, I still do sometimes, but yeah, definitely. But even think of the things you've sold this week that if I if, if I had told you you were buying that in 1998, you'd be like, why would I buy that? Yeah. Because it was so far out of our wheelhouse at the sure. time. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to grow into whatever, whatever it is you're selling. Um, and the best way possibly to do it is get as many different items listed as you can and learn from them. And everything will end up selling at some point, I believe, yeah. pretty much. Okay. Um, you know, so list as much as you can. 
buy and just keep at it and over time you'll find out you'll be the person walking by that box of the uh american rifleman and somebody else that's new to the new to the trade will be picking it up and be happy because they turned three dollars into 100 and they'll be happy Damn. and meanwhile you'll be happy because you'll be the person paying 40 dollars for the vogues that you're turning into 100 dollars a piece as well a lot quicker by the way sure. um kind of like the lotto you can't win if you don't play you can't have these sales unless you buy and list it so right right and you can't and realistically, you can't know the really good stuff unless you've had lots of stuff and dealt with lots of stuff throughout the years. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, could you get lucky, start reselling, and the first sale you go to, they have a pile of Golden Age comics with action number one on the top? You could. Be nice. I, I wouldn't bank on that, though. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that helps you a little bit. Hit the like button if you could, and we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.